Hello, this is Rajiv again from PR3 Systems. I want to thank you for watching and sharing your thoughts regarding the previous video which was about unstructured data stage. The fact that you are watching this video means that you are determined to be the best data stage developer and architect. You know that in this competitive landscape, knowledge is the key and you want to have the best knowledge so that you can be at the top of your game. It is my privilege to share this journey with you. After training more than 4,000 students and seeing some of them really shine later, I found that the traits that separated the leaders from everyone else was a passionate desire to learn and implement. They spent time and effort to ensure that they have the depth of knowledge which makes them very valuable and results in con consistent success and growth for them. Seeing you with me means that you are also on the same path. Today, on the second video of the series, I'll be talking about how to read and write XML files using the hierarchical data stage. Reading and writing to XML files are very critical activities for a lot of our clients. During the previous versions of data stage, the standard approach was to use XML input XML output and XML transformer stages. But in version 11.3 of data stage, hierarchical data stage was introduced, which is much faster and can work with much larger files. In a couple of days, you'll receive a link to our third video. The third video will also focus on a very important topic with respect to data stage job development. As I said in my last video, the continuation of these videos depends upon you. So if you find value from these videos, let us know. We will create more such videos in future. Please share your comments below. They are very, very important for us. Now I'll invite my colleague Shiva, who is going to talk about the hierarchical data stage. Thank you. Hi, welcome to this presentation. Today we're going to be talking about reading about XML data. So there are two different ways we can work with XML data and data stage. One is by using the XML packs. The second is by using the hierarchical data stage. So you guys may be wondering, you know, what's the difference? Why would I use one over the other? So to give you guys a little bit of background, the hierarchical data stage was introduced in 11.3 version. So it's a relatively new tool and this tool is superior to the XML packs. The reason why it is superior is because it can work with a larger uh, amount of data and it is it can work with more complex data. So why would we use the XML pack? We would use the XML pack if we have already been using the XML stage with our jobs and we don't want to switch. And it's good if uh, it is small amounts of data, so we won't need to switch to the hierarchical data stage. But if it is a high amount of data and if it's complex, then we are going to want to switch into the hierarchical data stage. And to give you a little bit more background before we stop talking about the XML packs, there are three different kinds. The input stage, the output stage, and the transformer stage. And the hierarchical data stage basically combines all of that. So let's start talking more about the hierarchical data stage. Now this is used to create powerful transforms that I said before. We'll talk more about the different types of transforms coming up soon. We can parse and compose JSON and XML data and we can invoke REST web services. And all these have a very high performance on the hierarchical data stage. We're talking many gigabytes of data that we can process in this. So high performance and high scalability. And XML is a very common standard in business today. So this is a very powerful tool when we want to use it. And as I said before, with this stage, we can do multi-gigabytes that traditional tools will face a lot of challenges as we t talked about the XML packs before. Now, let's talk about schema management. 
This is very important. The schema management contains all the metadata for the XML file. And in order for us to use the hierarchical data stage in data stage, we need to have the XML schema file as well. And the way we import it into data stage is by using the schema library manager. I'll talk a little bit more about how we do that in the next slide. But for now, let's talk a little bit more about it. This will be used to parse and compose the data so that our Basically, in our XML file, we'll have all the raw data, and the schema file will have all the metadata, so that in data stage, it can read it perfectly how it wants to, and we can use it for our jobs in a better way. So, as I talked about this before, this is the schema library manager. In the schema library manager, you'll find that in the imports tab, and once we do that, we'll want to create a new library, and in that library, we're going to want to import that schema file. And this library is very cool because once you import it, it'll validate it. It'll either give you an error message or a success message. When you see the error message, it's because your schema file wasn't configured correctly. If you see a success message, that means we were good to go and we could start working on the actual XML file. So, parsing and composing. There are two different types of files we could work with, it's XML and JSON. So we could parse and compose either of these. And we could also invoke RESTful web services. So now, as I said a little bit before, there are a ton of transforms in this stage, and this is where it really shines. We have different things like aggregate, which include things like sum, anything like that, uh, average, things of that nature, hpivot, which transport, transposes a list into a set of items based on a key. Then there's the hjoin. It's just any regular join that you could think about. There's regroup. It removes redundancies, just uh, basically makes the data quality a little bit better. There's vpivot. It transforms the items into a list, into a new list. And then there's sort. Um, all these are very good. I really recommend you guys get into the stage and actually start playing with these. So we also have things like switch. It specifies the criteria to use ca to categorize items into one or more new target files. There's the union as well. It combines two lists. There's order join. It selects two lists to join into one list. So once again, play with all these. You could actually do multiple transforms and I really recommend playing with it and trying them out for yourself and you'll master it very quickly. And then there's reading from an XML file. You know, that was the whole point of this whole video, right? So once we do all that and we go into the hierarchical data stage, this is the sort of screen that we'll see. There's going to be the input stage, the XML parser step, and the output step. So in all of these, we're going to want to configure everything. And you guys will be seeing a demo soon on how to actually do this, and it'll be a lot more clear. But for now, just try to follow along as best as you can. When we go up to the parser step, we're going to want to specify the, the file, the XML file. And then we're going to want to go into documentation route and select the schema file that we did all that work for before so that we have the metadata so that our hierarchical data stage can read our XML file. So to talk about a little bit more in the output step, we are going to want to create the mappings to the schema file and the XML file. And that was it for this video. So now you guys will be seeing a demo shortly. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you soon. Hello, my name is Siva from PR3 Systems and today we're going to be doing a demo for the hierarchical data stage. So as we discussed earlier, the reason for the hierarchical data stage is mainly to use XML files in data stage. So for this, for our simple demo, we're just going to be using a hierarchical data from the palette here 
it's in real time and we're also going to be using a flat file the sequential file so the first step is we want to go to import and go to schema library manager so I know we talked a little bit about the schema library as well uh, but just to reiterate the reason why we need the schema file is because the XSD file has the metadata the XML file does not so we're gonna wanna click new library and name it anything you want and now we're going to want to click import new resource this is where we click the get the XSD file so once you import it you will get one of uh, two, two different types of messages if it has been successfully uploaded this is how it's gonna look if it has not it'll give you an error and it'll give you a warning so what the warning means is the XSD file isn't configured correctly so th there's a problem in there now we can just press close and now since it's in there we can press OK and we'll be returned to the designer and now we get to click on XML the hierarchical data stage and you should see this window over here we're gonna wanna click edit assembly and in edit assembly this is where we actually get to start playing with the XML file and you know telling data stage what we want to do with it so when we open this the assembly editor we get this page and um, in the assembly outline there should be two steps right now there should be an input step and output step and when you see this red exclamation mark over here that means that there's something wrong or it hasn't been configured and for us since we haven't done anything with it yet it just means it hasn't been configured and here is a palette so the palette is your best friend in the assembly editor this gives you all the options we talked a little bit about the transforms so I strongly urge you to uh, take some time to play with each of these transform steps for now we're not going to include them in this demo because it'll make it too long but definitely play with them and uh, see how each of them work we also have the web service that we talked about and since we want to make this demo a little short and simple here is the XML parser this is the thing that's going to be able to allow us to read the XML data so what we're going to want to do is drag and drop this in between our input and output step perfect now we can close out of the palette so in our input step we don't have any inputs so we're gonna leave that blank now we're gonna wanna click our XML parser step here's where the fun part happens so you wanna click single file once you click on single file uh, specify where the XML uh, data is so once you do that you should be okay with that and you want to click insert parameter now we want to click document root so what the document root is it refers to the uh, first to the schema file we uploaded a little bit earlier we want to click browse and here we see it again remember we named that data stage that's why it came up here as data stage and here is the file that we put in emp, emps so click on this and you should get all this information over here and you want to click OK this is all the metadata that was in the schema file so now we see all this output over here has changed and we also see all this over here in the document root has also came here so we're done with that and now we can click output step in the output step you want to write out every uh, column that we have and then we're going to want to map it after I'm actually gonna pause the video and write everything out so that you guys don't have to stick around for that I'll see you guys shortly hi so I have written out everything and it should look something similar to this when you write it out but I also did want to add there is another way to do this where if you go into here and the input over here 
you should be able to drop down back to the schema file over here and we could put add children as new column for XML to flat link and what this will do is it'll add everything else but you want to make sure everything is named correctly that is going to be the main point but I'm just gonna delete these since we don't need them since I've already written them out but you do want to make sure everything has been mapped correctly when you do that now we want to click mappings and in mappings you should see a page like this so we want to map everything correctly there's two ways of doing this we can put map automatically and if the names are similar then it'll map automatically to that now over here we can also click the drop down and pick the correct one map automatically usually works just fine but uh, make sure everything has been mapped correctly and that everything has check marks over here once everything has been done correctly all the exclamation marks should go away so now we're going to want to click OK. Press OK again to close out of the hierarchical data stage configurations. And the flat file, we want to give it a uh, place for it to write. Uh, name it anything you'd like. I'm going to stick with XML to flat. And once everything has been done, we're going to want to compile the job. And it was successfully compiled, and now we can run it. Now we're just going to wait for everything to write to the flat file. Perfect. So now that's a good sign. Two rows were written. Now we're going to want to go into the flat file and press view data. Perfect. Now we see everything has been written out. The two names, John and Bob, their titles, data stage developer, data stage admin, years of experience, and their ID and this all corresponds correctly to the XML file so everything has been done correctly so now you guys know how to use the hierarchical data stage thank you I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation